We're going to have the original members talk about memories about the teatro, talk about significant events, significant plays. Uh, I, I told them, no pleitos, no chingazos, nothing like that, please. We'll say that for later. Okay. Uh, this is uh, La Vida del Pobre. This was a two-part play, and the first part dealt with the Bisbee deportation, and the second part dealt with the Phelps Dodge strike. This is a picket line. And what do you hope to accomplish by having a picket? Well, we're going to get a sunset. <laughs> <laughs> that was a way to go. We're on strike. We're protesting against those guys that are taking our jobs. And why are you on strike? <laughs> the company wants to freeze our wages. They want to cut our medical benefits. They don't want to improve our safety conditions. We're striking to keep our seniority rights also. También dile que nos quieren quitar la cola. Um, I was really sorry that my picture was in the star because it really was a collective. And by putting my picture in there, it made me look like I was at Honcho or something. So my hat's off to respect everybody here on this panel because I learned just as many things from this collective that was very working class oriented as they probably learned from me, which was more in terms of theater skills. And I really respect all of the theatro members who really kept good files. When I try to put things together, my wife's a historian and she always berates me that I don't say things. <laughs> and look, for me, looking for material was like looking for the Dead Sea Scrolls. <laughs> so, so, anyway, um, I, I wanted to, I think all of us have entered the teatro at different times of its stages of development. So what I say is more from personal experience and maybe you all have different memories of different dates and different things, and that's part of what history is. It's trying to, at some point, bring it all together. But um, I, I really want to just recognize those people in the community who are unfortunately are not here this evening, who helped start a, a fledgling group in 1969 called Teatro del Pueblo, and it included uh, Felizardo Valencia, who was a teacher at Rincon High, Ernesto Portillo Sr., who did a tremendous amount of, of advertising on the radio to get audiences in. And we did um, theater that was probably more formal, much more formal than the Teatro Libertad, and really focused on the Spanish, the well-known plays of Mexico and other Latin American countries that were written in, in Spanish. And there were a lot of divisions back in the community then in those years. And I think that the division between Teatro um, del Pueblo and Libertad, which came later, later, helped in some ways to signify those divisions in the community. I was torn because I liked formal theater, and I knew that I had a lot to learn from about politics in Arizona, a lot to learn from what it was to form a theater collective. You don't learn that when you're studying theater and um, in a formal drama setting in a university or college, um, it's, it's considered less theater. As Micheline Keating once said, right, <laughs> Sylvia? <laughs> that we weren't theater. She was a critic and a citizen. <laughs> and Sylviana said she's going to tear her heart out with an obsidian knife. <laughs> anyway, I'll shut up. But I wanted to give thanks to those people who, who supported the early. Um, Teatro del Pueblo, and some of the actors that, that, that did for a while work with us and that are here in the room tonight are Silviana, Arnold Palacios, and um, also then when Libertad started, um, there were a number of group people in the community that supported this form of theater, and these included, um, let me go to, over their names, um, uh, Lupe Castillo, um, Frank de la Cruz, uh, he's here tonight, John Miles who's here tonight. It takes a community to support a theater movement. It really does. You just can't do it in a vacuum 
without people out there in the community who are supportive of what you're doing. It, with reciprocity, we support what they're doing at times. But I think it's really important to know when we write the history someday of Latino, Chicano theater in Tucson, that we take in these different currents. Um, for example, um, the people that started Teatro um, Del Pueblo later formed Teatro Carmen and did, did again brought in theater companies from the outside. And Chuck Tatum, Dean Tatum, former Dean Tatum was here this evening, did a whole series of Mexican plays at the Historical Society. So it takes all these currents to build a theater movement. They don't always stay active, but they need to be recognized. So they, uh, um, my wife has stood by me all the times I did teatro. Is my son Chris here somewhere? Yes. And he was in some of our plays. I want to take the quick opportunity of, in, we're trying to keep the thread going of politics and theater. We have um, commissioned a playwright, uh, Mirta Ortiz, if you'd stand up please. She's doing a docudrama on the closing of ethnic studies. Uh, and we hope to be able to produce it here and tour it. And her husband is a director in residence. Mark, would you stand up? He will be helping her in her control. And he's also working in other projects at Borderlands. He's our director in residence this year. I was raised in Salinas Valley, Salinas, California, with Dan Steinbeck's shadow over me. And that's when I started writing. But a lot of people, when you read about Cesar Chavez, he was arrested in Salinas, one of the first times que andaba por ahí. Ya comencé, because I worked in the packing sheds, I worked in the, in the very big bird's eye, cosas frozen food, that's in the conveyor belt. So I started uh, finally getting creative writing and uh, at heart now, on this Steinbeck. And I would pass his house, he had his little Newman Center there, this, and I would imagine he's there guarding me eyes, Dan Steinbeck. And they had just filmed uh, East of Eden when I was uh, getting there. Ahí. So anyway, my big, my, when I got to Tucson, and then I meet Salomon, I meet all these uh, rebel rousers, you know, he, he made, and they started. They met at the conga every single night. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we, got, we got into knowing what was happening with El Rio, and so I andaba yo también. But the, one of the things que iba a decir, uh, we were rehearsing forever at Ori Park. In the, one of the shows for that, the Shrunken Head of Pancho Villa. But back to Arnold and my brother. It's a wonderful play by Luis Valdez. And uh, it's, it's a Shrunken Head in una cabezota, así, and we had it on top of the TV. And my brother, my, my brother's a poco, you know. <laughs> so uh, he invented a way to make the Shrunken Head smoke. And he's underneath the TV set. And then, so it was. What I wanted to say, we, we rehearsed a lot at Ori Park. Todavía éramos Teatro del Pueblo, not the classy one, the, the hard one. And, um, <laughs> our kids uh, del barrio started going to every rehearsal. And then we had, there was a deaf man, El Tocho. So the way we learned to project was if he said, No se oye! Cabrones, no se oye! So then we knew, okay, Tocho was way in the last row. We had, we had a project for that. We did. Nosotros somos Dios at the TCC, and I was all dressed up like a real classy Mexicana lady, and her, her sons and daughters are going into the revolution. And Amanda, where's Amanda? Amanda was in it. I asked that. También muy fancy. El Arno Palacio. <laughs> My brother Willie was el coronel, malo, he was a bad guy. And we had a, uh, he had a parrot there, that's what he bought one, he le puso el coronel. And then after that, I think we went downwards. <laughs> we started doing barrio, barrio stuff. Willie and Arnold. And then they got me to do it también, because they always needed a, a secretary vendida. Right? <laughs> For model cities. So, anyways, so we started doing the skits. We still called ourselves Teatro, Teatro del Pueblo. <clears throat> we had a lot of adventures because Willie and Arnold están locos. Totally <laughs> certifiable. <laughs> we had a skit uh, making fun of model cities, of course, El Dinero, and we would ask, ¿A dónde está el jefe? They would ask me, the secretary. Y les dice, well, he's studying poverty. 
He's studying about poverty and poverty program. Y Loyal Arnold dice, well, where is he? Where's he studying poverty? In Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> and then Arnold and Willie, they bring in this poor person to fill out the forms for Bottle Cities, and they brought in a ream, así grandote de, de papel. And they told the viejito, you have to fill out these forms. Está así largo. And then Willie and Arnold, like, how do, no traigo lápiz. Y lo dice el Arnold, nosotros tenemos un lápiz. They walk in with a six foot number two yellow pencil, <laughs> complete with eraser and point. ¿Te acuerdas? <laughs> so then, hello, la secretary, are you doing her nails? She didn't give that. <laughs> so then, from there, we, we didn't have materials, so we went on to Luis Valdez's. All his actos, we did La Conquista de México, Los Vendidos. Uh, ¿Cuál era el otro? El soldado raso. El soldado <laughs> In La Conquista de Mexico, we didn't have enough feathers. I was telling somebody, so agarramos una pluma, here's one, we're in Dios. <laughs> we're going to conquer Cholula. We did a chacha, vamos a Cholula. <laughs> so we did all of this. Uh, we were more than becoming más, um, learning más de la política here in Tucson. So comenzamos con uh, ay, all kinds of things, más de, de Tucson. And, um, that's all I remember. We had to improvise a single momento. If somebody said they're doing a raid at, at El Rio for the, they got the files and todo, but that was libertad. And we said, oh, we're going to do illegal aliens. And los pusimos así antenas. Y lo para hacer cucarachas con tortillas. We <laughs> hicimos muchas cosas. So that's, that's how I got in it, because of uh, the lettuce boycott. Entonces we, we went on doing más y más. And then that's about it. Uh, la, la locura kept on. Um, <laughs> I'll just mention real quick la, the process that, that Barclay mentioned, the collective. It was hell. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was hell. We had to all agree. We had to go research. We had to go into the barrio and say, ¿Qué, ¿qué es lo que más queremos presentar? And then get together and then start improvisations and then start the scripting, then the rehearsals, and then the presentation, and not one penny. <laughs> we had to improvise instantly, as if when we were trying to come up with our script. The first time that Scott was a priest, we were doing the Brexit and the mother, La Jefita, mm -hmm. and Scott's a priest and Pancho's there as well. <coughs> we had lived half of the time, so Scott right away wrote, we will now learn about sin. Yes, I am, and Pancho right away says, sin papeles! <laughs> <laughs> Keep it, keep it. So that's how we, we did a lot of the stuff. This is where I got my political education from, from teatro. I want to thank everybody who participated in teatro because we had to read, we had to do a lot of research. I remember Linda Leatherman, her first day on the job coming in, she wanted to be a teatrista. And uh, so we handed her a book of Occupied America. You read this. You got to read this. Occupied America, which is now unfortunately banned. Banned. You know? And, uh, and uh, when we did a lot of really good, really political things. We were in New York City and we were chairman the best. It was a uh, Latino uh, Teatro Festival at the time, that's what it was called. And it was, uh, we performed at the People's Theater. And uh, it was a really, really great experience. In fact, the Village Voice termed us as the best theater group there because what we were dealing with was with immigration. This is what we're dealing right now. And we're still dealing, most of us are really working on immigration issues right now, 1070 and all, all this kind of stuff. Um, uh, with the dreamers, I mean, we're into uh, all kinds of stuff. And, and I gotta say thanks to Teatro, because, well, I remember one time, and Roberto Torres, um, he rest in peace, he passed away about 10 years ago. And uh, him and I were in Mexico City, we we're performing in Mexico City, and. Uh, we, uh, so we went to the, I think it was the Socalo, I can't remember where the mariachis play all night long. Yeah, yeah, so when I'm standing there having a cerveza, me and Roberto having a cerveza, and I said, please me, Roberto, I'm starting to bother you, what in the hell am I doing here, okay, in Mexico City, you know, doing teatro, you know, hearing the mariachis, it's a dream, you know, like, I never imagined when I was going to Pueblo, you know, I was very, very, very shy, and I still am. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so, and, uh, so they really gave me a lot of confidence. Teatro did, and I'm, you know, I was kind of 
push that there. You got to do it. You got to do it. Half of the time, I forget my lines and you know, just all screwed up and stuff. And served me very well. And especially the politics. In fact, we were talking about. Uh, I was talking to Juan Villegas, that's Juan Villegas one time, and in mean, the cafeta, there was some scene there where we, uh, the whole scene was about the Communist Manifesto. And it was really, really great. It was in terms of people, barrio de la gente, working people, really checking it out. Why, why, why does it really eat the Communist Manifesto? We were very successful with it. Uh, Silviana was the mother, wasn't it the mother? The yeah, mother, like you were here with the mother, yeah, playing the mother. And, yeah, she was learning what it was, what it was all about. And uh, another time that I'll never forget, we uh, as a group we were invited. We belong to this organization, Tenaz, Teatros. Uh, what was Nacional de Clan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, they're having a festival there. We were invited to go there, but they also invited some countries of the. There were Pacific Rim uh, countries that had a lot of repression, South Korea, Argentina, and Argentina. It was chaos in Argentina and Chile, and all parts of the, of the world around there, the, the Pacific and stuff. So uh, Scott and I and Teresa, our job. So anyway, the teatro sent us to, uh, to this conference of teatros. So we were to uh, urge them to boycott the festival. So we get there, and uh, they told us, oh, this archaic, demonstrations are archaic. Demonstrations are archaic, why don't you guys wake up and stuff? But you know, we were very successful. We did boycott, and we had a big demonstration there. And Luis Valdez was there with Governor Brown, you know, all applauding people and all this kind of stuff. He wouldn't even talk to us, because we were there demonstrating. I saw this group in California one time. Uh, Teatro de la Esperanza doing, um, what is it, La Victima. Um, and I, I decided that I wanted to do that. And I came back to Tucson, and I, I saw these guys doing all this stuff. And I thought, I gotta get in there. Uh, I happened to know Barkley, and uh, he invited me to the group. Uh, one thing that uh, that I brought to the group. Everybody brought something different to the group. Like Barclay brought the technology, uh, Teresa the beauty. He uh, <laughs> 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 doesn't want me to hit him with the rotten tomatoes. <laughs> yeah. Sylvia, the, the, uh, the ability to write funny. And uh, I ended up doing that technical part. <laughs> yeah. And I remember trying to teach Barkley and Sylvia how to roll cables. <laughs> and they just couldn't get it together. <laughs> so um, um, I, uh, one of the, the, the things that I remember mostly about teatro is that we were so strict, so rigid about meetings. Oh, it was incredible. We couldn't miss meetings. Um, and we had to be there on time and prepared. And it was every, what, Wednesday or? Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tuesdays and Thursdays. Thursdays and Sundays. Three times a week. Yeah. And, and, we, and we didn't have cell phones then, so. <laughs> so we couldn't call everybody and say, hey, get over here. Um, <laughs> But uh, uh, it, it, to me, it was a great experience. Um, I, I, of course, uh, I remember some of the things like uh, uh, Frank Pancho was saying uh, in uh, Mexico City at La, that Latelolco is where we were doing that, uh, that play. And it was a play about revolution and uh, demonstrations. Um, and we were doing it in the Tlatelolco while at on the outside of that theater, there were thousands and thousands of people demonstrating because it was the 10th memorial. It was 1978, and it was a memorial to the 68 uh, uh, shootings, the massacre. Uh, and, and that was just incredible. I'll never forget that.
I actually think I can still project. Wow. <laughs> All that trade, the theatrical training I had with Barclay. Uh, actually, for me, Teatro Libertad was his fault. <laughs> I was the student of drama. Um, para los que no saben, mi idea era ser una actriz famosa en México. You know, um, I used to go as a child to see. I remember when they started showing movies in Spanish, and I would go with my mom, and I would be like so overwhelmed that they're doing these movies in Spanish. Oh my God! And I thought, oh, pues yo voy a hacer la próxima María Félix, ¿por qué no? Right? <laughs> but it didn't happen that way, unfortunately, because then I, I decided to go to Pima. I met Barkley at Pima, and um, I don't remember how you thought that I could be part of this, because I was like this young, innocent tontita that didn't know anything about anything. I got a hold of anyone I could. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. Oh, that's how it <laughs> but for me, teatro, I think, um, uh, was such a huge turning point in my life. And it was really great the other day, Neto, where are you, Neto? Neto, hi, Neto. Neto asked me, you know, do you, how did it change your life? And, you know, of course I was talking on the spur of the moment, but in retrospect, yes, it changed my life. Because I'm not a famous Mexican actress. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, but, but um, you know, when I, when I joined, I really didn't know anything about anything. I mean, I realized how ignorant I was about our history and what was happening to our people. Y, y que pasaba con los mexicanos, the deportations, all these pieces of history that I never knew because it was never taught in my school anyway. And so when we started working on El Basil, for me that was like such a great play because it, it just to, to read Occupied America and like how you mentioned all the research we had to do. So for me, teatro was concientización. And for me to be able to take a little bit of that out to the community and to know that, um, that people were responding to what we were saying because they had a lot of the same needs or the same concerns or the same issues or the same fears or the same whatever that they needed at that time. Um, for me, yes, I love the fact that we performed on big stages. We performed in the off, off, off Broadway. We performed in the Teatro La Ciudad in Mexico City. But I think for me, some of the more moving plays that I loved was being out in Los Files and talking to the farm workers and you know just being con la gente y dándonos cuenta qué está pasando con nuestra gente. So for me, it was a huge politiza, you know, concientización. And so it, I, it, it really did change my life. And the only reason I left teatro, I would have probably stayed with it till the end, I was fortunate enough to get hired to work at KUAT. And then I realized, well, I can use what I'm doing in television to help get the word out about certain things, to inspire, educate, you know, help our community. And, and while we couldn't do that 100% of the time, because there's always, you know, the big bosses or whatever, but we were able to do a lot of things, I felt. And thanks to the opportunities we had at KUAT, you know, Doña Chona became, of course, a very popular part of Reflexiones, the show that we did for so many years. So, you know, we were able to carry it on in a different way, but, uh, you know, we carried it on. <laughs> uh, for me, teatro meant a lot, because uh, I come from Bolivia, South America, so I was a little lost. So when I found Teatro Libertad, I didn't just found my community. I found my family as well as I found my true university education. Um, because I felt that when we were doing teatro, we did have to read a lot, so we had to back it up. Anything that we did, we had to back it up, and we had to have the information. I don't feel, in those times, I didn't feel I was intellectual. I still don't feel I'm intellectual, but I do know that when something's wrong, it's wrong. When you feel something's wrong, something's wrong. And I feel now that the young people, they don't know the struggles that we went through in the 70s and 80s and even before that, you know. And when I work with and my supervisor, 27 year old, that has no conscience of what we're known in the 70s and 80s, I go, oh my God, what happened? You know, what happened to all the education we tried to do out there? So my vision is to see more education like that for the young people, you know, for, uh, because they're really, I think they're, most of them are very lost because there's so much, so much information now that we have with the internet and they can get very, very much confused. You know, so for me, I wish I could see theater again with new people. And that's my vision. With La Vida del Cobre, we were always 
pushing for our agendas, right? And sometimes it was hard to push for for um, um, a more transnational agenda or whatever. We wanted to put Chile, we wanted to put everything about uh, uh, what was going on at that time in the world. Um, we were doing progressive politics in a context where everything was getting so conservative uh, and, and so ugly and so Reaganite. And we were, uh, we were able to push through our agendas in the sanctuary movement, in the miners movement, and I was really happy to be able to be part of that. And I thank you all for having, uh, having had the, the, the openness of mind and of soul to be able to accept, accept uh, people from Bolivia and uh, accept people from El Salvador, because in, in the end there were Salvadoreños uh, that sort of were part in a, in, in a little bit, for a little while, in Teatro Libertad too. So um, I just wanted to say that, um, um, that I love you guys for that, and uh, I love you, I love the way in which um, we, we work together. And I think also to the people who saw us and accompanied us, like Lupe Castillo, I never forget her. I uh, never forget John Miles, and I never forget Bill, who were always accompanying us in all our uh, comings and goings and doing theater. And um, I don't know, theater marked my life. Um, I did my dissertation on the theater movement in Nicaragua and Cuba. Uh, theater became my um, my uh, my way of doing things and politics because it went beyond the politics. It, it it allowed me to to be a human being with all of you. Thank you for that. Working, a lot of us were working with the United Farm Workers boycott here in Tucson, and we were doing a guerrilla theater. You know, and we would get together in John and Nancy Bakoviak's backyard and you know, drink beer and just, you know, have a good time. But in all seriousness, we would plan a, a, to do a, a play or performance in a, like a mall. And I think at that time there was only one mall. I think it was the Elkhorn Mall. So we would go there with rotten vegetables and hose and farm worker clothes. And, and John Makoviak would stand or go, go around the mall and start yelling, attention, everyone, attention. There will be a play in the mall here in five minutes. So, well, people came out of the stores, and, and of course, security came, and I think Nancy, <laughs> Nancy Makoviak went and dealt with them, and our play was only like five or ten minutes, and by the time the police got there, we were gone, and of course, we left, we left all the old vegetables there, and we, we did this in front of uh, some uh, markets, too, that were carrying uh, non-farm worker lettuce, but out of, out of this, you know, you know, we, we had a lot of fun doing it, but one time in Makoviak's backyard, Barkley shows up, and I think Teresa was with him, and they were going to show us, you know, how to act. Well, <laughs> hell, we, 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 we thought we were pretty good actors, you know. <laughs> but, uh, so it was kind of funny, all the exercises we had to go to. So I, I was a part of it back then in the beginning, and I knew with all this practicing and rehearsals, it was going to take a, a real commitment, you know. It started out like one day a week, and then it went to two days a week, and then I think it went Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And I wasn't prepared to to get make that commitment, but I was prepared to when when they were going to do a play in the park to go there and help set up and and do various things that required you know non rehearsal activities. But but it was I mean I really enjoyed it, and I'm so happy to see a lot of the people who participated. You know, in it in the early days, and I'm sorry that John and Nancy Makoviak aren't here too because they, they were the ones that really got it going. And we were kind of copying Teatro Campesino, that the, the farm worker theater group that would do these kind of things. So, was a Teatro member who, um, <laughs> who uh, had some uh, problem with his girlfriend who happened to be working with the Teatro office at the time in South Tucson. <laughs> And uh, I showed up there one morning and I found him very drunk, uh, sitting in his car with uh, a bunch of beer bottles in the back and a half a bottle of tequila. 
<laughs> and uh, he was waiting for his girlfriend. So eventually he, uh, she, she came by and he got very, very belligerent uh, in the theater office and I had to remove him and I had her take him out and I kind of had to push him out of the office and get him into the car and home and uh, sober up. Well, somebody was driving by at that time who happened to be the brother of this teatro member, or, or a friend of the brother of this teatro member, who called the brother and said, hey, I was just driving down South Tucson and this big white guy was pushing your brother around, pushing him in a car, it was like, it was really bad. And his, his brother says, South, South Six, yeah, and South Tucson, yeah. That's teatro, they're always fucking doing the street theater. <laughs> We were always inspired by the Campesino. They, they had published a lot of um, what we call actos, short, short uh, theater pieces. And um, so we, we aspired to do that kind of work. And some of the teatro members actually came to Tucson various times to perform. Some stayed with us. And sometimes they give us workshops. They were mostly in acting. There was a really crucial person from the San Francisco Francisco Mind Troupe, which is a radical theater in the Bay Area. And she taught as Sandra Archer, and this was before Libertad, I don't think here people know her, but a year before Libertad was formed, I really realized that I didn't know how to form, I didn't know how to get a group to write collectively. There's a technique to that. And it's too bad there are not more people in, in, in cities that are facing issues and there are young people that want to work on these issues. So someone to train, it's a whole process that comes out of the meetings. You know, what kind of questions to ask, what kind of input do you give, how, what's the form for putting input, and it's a really special skill. So I'm really, we are, uh, 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 did you know Sandra? No. I think I have met Okay, yeah. did you know her? Well, we okay. went to one of the performances, no? But no, I, I am really indebted to her because I think that without that skill being, it's like a dance company needs a certain kind of training at a certain time, or a, a music group needs a certain kind of training, or you just can't go on. And I felt we would always be in the same rut if we hadn't had someone come in and help us really formulate how to do collective work. And as Silviana and Arturo said, it's a lot of discipline. I think it was the rest of time about going out, out there to El Mirage. And uh, there was a lot of organizing done uh, with that documented there in El Viraje and stuff. So we went there to uh, perform at this community center one night. And uh, the owner found out, so they said, no, they turned off the lights. So which, what we did, we found a post, well, we found a light by the side of the road. And we set up camp there, and the campesinos come out, and they put their headlights on, you know, so we could perform. And this is how we the way we perform without no electricity and stuff, and it was really, really great. And you know, it's just a fantastic job with it there. And then, you know, the other day I was just looking at our schedule one time, one of the years, and, and I thought, man, I mean, I, it was really grueling schedule because I think, I think all those years we were together, we were, we were performing over a hundred, a hundred, we're doing a hundred performances. A year, over a hundred. <laughs> I think for me what inspired me was um, when I began working, going to California and getting all the people from uh, Central America. And then when I met Teatro Libertad, inspired me because, as I said early, when you feel something wrong, something wrong. So you don't have to be an intellectual to know that. And what inspired me is that there were a lot of things going on in our community that needed to be, somebody needed to talk about it. And I think teatro, we had the balls to do it at those times, mm -hmm. because we're really out there, you know, we're really out there, not just educating the people that we're performing to, but educating our closest friends, you know. And many of us, I think myself, I lost some friends that they didn't believe in my politics or what I was doing. Mm -hmm. So that was a struggle as well, because, uh, and we're still struggling with that, I think, as Latinos and Hispanics, Chicanos, that we live here in Arizona, I think we have even more struggles now with the immigration thing that's going on right now. And I feel that now it's time to get all the young people really to be mobilized again and be as we did in the 70s and 80s, you know, be out there and really bring that passion out, which I don't see anymore in young people. I don't see it. 
and I, I miss that. You know, I miss the passion. I miss that uh, wanting to hold on to something because you were going to find some kind of change. You know, and if we didn't find the change, I think I don't feel I change a lot, but I think theatre changed me. Changed me in a way that I was more conscious about things. Changed me in a ways that I would question things more. You know, I was not just an immigrant coming from a poor country trying to do the best or uh, obtain the American dream, that was not it. I wanted to know justice. I wanted to know what was going on in the United States. You know, how were the so-called major majority people were treating the minority? And that's what gave me passion to continue. Right. <laughs> Sylviana Wood. She's a writer, playwright, Sonia Chona. Arturo Martinez. <laughs> Teresita Jones. I love. Berkeley Goldsmith. Liliana Lamarte. Francisco Pancho Medina. And Pernela Jones and Pamela Kaya. Pernela has to do the, the Skype, so I have to take her.